Welcome to this broadcast. My name is Paul. I'm in Peterhead in Scotland. Very pleased to be here today. We are continuing our journey through Ezekiel chapter 11, a glorious portion of the sacred pages to um, yeah, splendid. So um, this is one of those chapters that reveals um, new covenant truth, what we call New Testament reality. That is to say, the fullness uh, of what the Lord Jesus Christ has accomplished in eternal redemption, um, the greatness of the work of God in Christ, in reconciling the world to himself. And the tender mercy is promised to, um, to Adam, to Noah, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to Solomon, to David through Christ, through the prophets, the apostles and the saints throughout the ages, everything fulfilled in one man, even the son of the father's love, um, the beauty of the eternal covenant, the wonder of the heart of Elohim, Yahweh, um, the great loving kindness of the great benevolence, the great philanthropy, the great love to men from God. Um, so if you want to hear the, pre the whole chapter read, friends, at EQ11, you can do that on the previous broadcast. Um, you know, it's a great thing to, to be a student of the scripture, friends, and to, to learn the scriptures. Uh, King David said, your word have I hid in my, in my heart that I might not sin against you. So it's a great thing to, to study the scriptures. And of course, Ezekiel is in a place of divine revelation. He hears the voice of God. He sees the four living creatures. Uh, he sees many angels. The sovereign purpose of God. We looked at, uh, at chapter 10 at the throne of God, the house of Adonai, Yahavar Elohim, um, the inner court of the house of the Lord God Almighty. The outer court of Jehovah, and the court of the Lord, and the threshold of the house of Yahweh. Um, is, 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 we discussed that in, in the previous broadcast, that's Ezekiel 10. And then you have the various cherubims and the wheels, which is very much a theme of Ezekiel chapter 1. So it's the sovereign operations, the heart and the mind, and the absolute complete sovereignty of Elohim, Yahweh, over all flesh. That's what's in view in chapter 10. And there's lots of the work of angels. Of course, we we read in the New Testament that angels, they minister salvation. It's a holy mystery. And, you know, as Bible-believing Christians, we, we're often prone to sort of go against what is largely Catholic and religious really teaching around angels and ministry of angels. And, of course, the, the Roman Catholic system has taken it to extremes where men pray to angels and ask angels to intercede or even ask humans to intercede, such as asking Mary, which is, called, is of course, unbiblical and wrong. Um, however, we do see in Scripture that angels play a very important role. Um, we read of angels carrying the, the prayers of the saints to God. We read of angels um, executing the wrath of God upon the earth. We read of watchers and holy ones in Daniel that set decrees concerning mankind. Um, and as I said, we see angels that minister salvation. So it's a holy mystery, friends. These things are not greatly explained in scripture. But if you minister salvation, it means you actually provide deliverance. So mysteriously, um, men are actually um, delivered from circumstances and things by angels. You see, and of course, everything is under the sovereignty of God. So it's all the work of grace and God. Angels only do what God commands them to do and in line with the heart and mind of God. And the sovereign power of the creator is behind all things, you know. Uh, and as a man or a woman opens the curtains in the morning, when the curtains are opened, all flesh will see uh, that they are well entirely subject to Elohim, Yehovah. All nations, all mortals are all entirely subject to the Lord Jesus Christ at this present moment.
time of revelation when all mortals will see that they live and move and have their being in the Lord Jesus the Christ. That they live, move and have their being in Adonai Yahavar Elohim. All flesh will understand that they are all subject to the heart and mind and will of God. Whoever is not subject to the Son shall perish. Whoever is subject to the Son shall not see wrath and shall have deliverance, mercy, and immortality. Everlasting joy shall be their portion. In one man, God has one man in view, friends. Think of it. At the dawn of creation, friends, one man upon the planet to start with. All the creatures, the skies, the sea, the land, all the different creatures, one man. The Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, amongst the creatures, there was no suitable counterpart for the first man. So the man was put into a deep sleep and the woman was created from the rib from part of the man. And the Lord Jesus in the sleep of death, out of the tomb Christ came and his body is his wife, the king's daughter all glorious within, the mystery of God Christ and the church, the queen in gold of Ophir upon my right hand. Jesus said, nobody can take you out of my hand and my father, my father is greater than all and nobody can take you out of my father's hand. And Jesus said, I know my sheep, my sheep know me, I give them eternal life, they shall never perish. Nobody can come to me unless my father draws them. All that come to me, I will never cast away. It's a wonderful thing, friends. Whoever believes on Jesus and the word of Jesus shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. I believe that's John 5, 24. John 8, 31, 32. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples, and they shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So, friends, let us do, do exactly that. Let's continue in the word of truth this morning. So, we're now in the second half of chapter 11, and we finished off with verse 14. I suppose I ought to do a very brief re recap of the chapter. Chapter 10 was the angelic operations, the, uh, the sovereignty of God, uh, the dealings of God with mortals, and the heavenly work of God, one could say. And in chapter 11, you have the spirit lifting Ezekiel up um, and he sees these men, Jazaniah and Pelatiah, and they wickedly counseled men that devised iniquity. And there was, it was a terrible time of violence and drunkenness and fornication and sexual perversion and oppression and fear. And they'd murdered a lot of men in Jerusalem. They'd filled the streets with dead bodies. Um, and of course, the men that had done it themselves feared the same thing happening to them. They were all under fear. You see, they were under fear of the same wicked happening to them that they'd done to others, you see. So God said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring you out of it, and then I'm going to give you into the hand of strangers, uh, and I'm going to execute my judgments upon you, okay? You will die by the sword, um, but you won't, this won't be a cauldron, and you won't be the flesh in it. I'm bringing you out of it, and you will know that I am Jehovah and the Lord, in whose statutes you haven't walked, neither have you done my ordinances, but you've done as the nations around you. And as Ezekiel proclaimed this, there was death. A man called Pelatiah died there and then. So read the scriptures, friends. Read them aloud. God's word runs very swiftly. Uh, the entrance of God's word giveth light. The sum of God's word is truth. Learn the word of God, friends. Study the scriptures. Christ and the word are one. See? So as Ezekiel prophesied, Pelatiah dropped dead. 
Ezekiel, being deeply moved to man dropping dead in front of him, said, Ah, Donai, Yahweh, will you make a full end of the remnant of Yasharel? And then the Devah Yahweh, the word of the Lord, came to Ezekiel, saying, Is it your brethren, men of your family, the house of Israel, to whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem say, Get up far from the Lord, to this land is given us for possession? Is it your family to whom people in Jerusalem say, get away from the Lord, get away from Jehovah? So it's a deep spiritual question that really says that it's the wicked spirits, the doomed, deluded demons that influence mortals to wickedry and departure from Jehovah Elohim. That's what that means. And of course, that's Ezekiel 11, 15, 15. So by the sovereign grace of God, God gives revelation to mortals that it's the work of demons, not the work of humans, that influences humans to be wicked and to be against each other and to be against themselves. That's, that's the mystery of it. So is it your family that tells you to get away from the Lord? And at the same time, we could say that right now, friends. Uh, mankind, is it? Other humans that tell you to get away from Jehovah Elohim? Mankind, is it humans that tell you to get away and be disobedient from Yahovah Elohim? No, it's doomed, deluded demons that delude mortals. Even at this present moment, mankind is entirely under the delusion. Mankind is under the wrath of God and under the curse of God. Modern Christians don't like to contemplate this, but oh yes, the wrath of God, the curse of God, the curse of sin and death is still upon the earth. Oh yes. Oh yes. And furthermore, it's wicked spirits that cause mortals not to be reconciled to their creator at the present moment. And that cause mortals to be unholy and disobedient to Yahovah Elohim. Yahovah Elohim is king of nations, king of saints, king of glory, king of heaven, king of earth, king of kings and lord of lords. So there's various things going on in this portion of scripture, friends. We see the declaration uh, of the wickedry of mortals, but then we also see the revelation that it's wicked spirits that cause mortals to, to turn from Elohim Yahavar and to give wicked counsel. You see, the human beings that are deceived, they become deceivers. That's the problem with deluded mortals. Mortals that are deluded delude other mortals, whereas those that study the scripture know the truth think, speak, and live the truth. They declare the truth. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. That's why um, with the heart, men believe to righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. So with the heart, men can believe that the Lord Jesus Christ both died and rose again, but with the lips declaring the Lord Jesus, the Christ, Messiah, Saviour, King, Lord, Judge and Sovereign. Mortals have deliverance in God's sight. Um, so we see here this chapter is quite a revelation, really, when you look closely at it, friends. Um, and uh, God says in, uh, in verse 12, which is Ezekiel triple one two, you shall all know that I am Yahovah in whose statutes you haven't walked, you haven't done my ordinances, you've done after the ordinances of the nations that are round about you. See, and as he prophesied, Pelatiah dropped dead, and then God reveals to, um, to them um, through Ezekiel, and he addresses Ezekiel, in fact, in verse 15, and declares um, to him and through him, um, that it's actually unseen wicked spirits, the spirits of disobedience that work in the children of wrath. Um, 
God says, I'll be a little sanctuary to them in the countries where the, they are come. And of course, we know that this was 2,600 years ago. We know that the Jews were scattered throughout the earth at that time. And um, 650 years after, 600 and yes, nearly 650 years after this, the Romans brutally, brutally besieged Jerusalem and they crucified and disemboweled and starved and tortured uh, many thousands of Jews. And uh, the Jews had to flee the land of Israel around AD 70. It's historical reality. And they, um, they, of course, went to many countries. And for 1870 years until the end of World War II, Israel was not a nation. And God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, through the believers, through the Christianized nations, through the wife of Christ, the Lamb's wife, uh, caused the Jews to be allowed to reorganize as a nation in 1948. It was born in a day. Of course, now the fig tree has blossomed at this present moment, 75 years later. Israel uh, is now a very powerful military uh, country and a very powerful economic country and a very powerful intelligent uh, country, very likely uh, um, with one of the best intelligence services the earth's ever known. And of course, there's only one king of Israel. There's only one king of kings and lord of lords, and that is the king of the whole universe, Jesus the Christ son of the living God. So they were all scattered. Um, so then in verse 17, almost immediately in two verse, in verse 6, 16, God says, uh, thus says Yahweh Elohim, the Adonai, though I've removed them and scattered them, I'll be a little sanctuary to them there when the countries where they come but in the next verse ezekiel 1117 therefore thus says the lord jehovah i will gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries where you're scattered and i will give you the land of israel so it's most remarkable and noteworthy friends that in the space of two adjacent verses they are put out of israel into many other countries and then regathered and the difference friends Triple one six, they're scattered. That's all. And triple one seven, they are regathered. Oh, Ezekiel one one, verse seventeen, they are regathered and they are given the land of Israel. And of course, that's what's been happening this last seventy five years. Um, and then in verse eighteen, that looks even further to the millennial kingdom. They will come there and take away which is imminent. From thence, all its detestable things and all its abominations. So their, their idolatries and their wicked and their revelry and devilry will cease. I've mentioned, friends, at the present time, two thirds of the men, and there are only men and women on this planet, two thirds of the men in Tel Aviv, Israel, at the present time, openly proclaim that they are sexual perverts, that they take pleasure in anally penetrating the poo holes of other men, which is sickening and disgusting. Right? Two thirds of the men in Tel Aviv are happy to announce their sexual perversion and disgusting wickedness. Right, so that's the reality. Spiritually, Jerusalem is called Sodom and Gomorrah. Israel is not the Holy Land, for they rejected and crucified their king. Yet Jerusalem is still the city of the great king. And all flesh is entirely subject. The Lord Jesus will destroy his enemies with the breath of his lips. God will take away all detestable things and all the abominations. I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh. So, great 
thing for fans to to contemplate um, reality, to think about uh, well living epistles that God can write His laws uh, on the hearts of men. God by his spirit, by the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, is able to guide, to teach, and to strengthen strength that is expounded in Jeremiah, the Corinthians. And it's indeed uh, largely a great theme of, of the doctrine of Scripture is the fact that the Son of God, being every man and woman and child upon the planet at the present moment, is able to uh, gather all men and all women and bring in righteousness of the ages, eternal justice, uh, eternal truth, eternal love, eternal power, and all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The reality that the Son of God is able to effectuate all the mind and counsels of Jehovah Elohim. The fact that Father, through the Son, by the Spirit, is able to cause all flesh to be righteous. Uh, all the doomed, deluded demons are waiting to be thrust into the pitch darkness, chained of the bottomless abyss for a thousand years. Whereupon for 1,000 years there shall be everlasting joy, everlasting gladness, everlasting truth upon this orb. There shall be no more curse for that 1,000 years. The lion shall lie down with the lamb. Righteous shall be just, all flesh shall be, will be entirely agreeable in the future of all mankind. God will see to it. Oh, yes, God will see to it. So, this doctrine of, of one, like the unity of the God, call it, is all the work of Christ Jesus, all the work of the Son of the Father's love. So it's a great thing, friends, to, to understand the work of God in Christ by the Spirit, through the saints, through the life. Uh, Christ loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify her and cleanse her, and redeem her to himself and present her to himself a living, glorious church without spot, wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. So this theme of, 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 of all mankind being given one heart, a new spirit, uh, a heart of flesh, the stony heart taken out of their flesh. It's a great thing to think of, friends. Um, the theme of stone in scripture is very much an important theme as well. The rock of ages, the ancient is the father of today. Uh, in your point in time, days comes and sets everything in every place, in every mortal, in every nation, in every community, everything in order. Order in the house of Jehovah Elohim. Now, all flesh lives in the house of Elohim Yahovah. The Lord Jesus is every man, woman, and child upon this orb, living and dead. Christ is Lord of the living and Lord of the dead. But the mystery is that God is, is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Something of a mystery uh, between the Father and the Son, friends. Now, of course, this has to do with the resurrected Christ, God out of the tomb. Um, the body of Jesus is the wife of Jesus. That's the mystery of it. Just as that first man out of his body came the woman, um, the lamb and the lamb's wife are one. It's the mystery of things, friends. 
It has to do with the creative, redemptive purposes of Elohim Yahovah. So it all has to do with the obedience of the Son to the Father, the obedience of the faith. Mortals are to be obedient to the blood of Jesus. And nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. The first, the first woman did the will of the devil and brought death and sin and sorrow upon all mankind. The first man did the will of the woman that had done the will of the devil and thus entered into, entered into wrath. But the Son of God, the Lord Jesus, the second man, the Lord from heaven, did the will of God and wrought eternal redemption, uh, destroyed all the doomed, deluded demons, ushered in the everlasting righteousness and uh, wrought eternal redemption. And this is Christianity, friends. This is the kingdom of Elohim, Yehovah. Now, one couldn't really say enough about verse 19. I'll give them one heart and I'll put a new spirit within you. I will take away the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. So this has to do, this is all Christ. You see the heart of Jesus. You can read in Colossians, friends, about how the Son of God who has preeminence over all things, the Prototokos, um, has power to subdue all mortals to himself. Uh, all things live through, for, with, and by Christ Jesus. All things serve the Lord Jesus Christ at this present moment. There is no counsel, purpose, no understanding against the Lord Jesus, friends. The Lord Jesus rules the whole planet. Mortals are a creature possession, the size of grasshoppers, and nations are like drops in a bucket. This is reality. Now, as I say, friends, um, it's a great thing to understand various themes in scripture. And I often mention on the channel, the theme of trees, for example. Uh, we read that men are seen as trees walking. Of course, Christ was crucified upon one of the three trees. There's three men on three trees that day. Christ is the tree of life, uh, the cross of Jesus Christ, through which the world is crucified to you and you to the world. Um, and of course, the rock, as I said, Christ is the stone cut out of the mountain, which is the Lord Jehovah God. Uh, without hands and comes into the world, becomes a great mountain and fills the whole planet. Daniel 2, and of course, we've got an entire playlist of 29 bo broadcasts um, covering the whole book of Daniel on this channel. And of course, Christ is the cornerstone that the builders rejected that has become the head of the corner. Um, and ye are living stones built together to be a, a holy spiritual house. God inhabits the praise of his people, you see. Um, and of course, the stone, the rock was laid across the door of the tomb. It was a freshly hewn rocky tomb and the rock of ages went into it, came back to life. The rock was rolled away from the door and out the son of God came to die no more. The risen Christ God truth incarnate. Your Elohim is truth and the king of eternity. One heart, a new spirit within you. That's the spirit of Jesus the Christ, you see. The mystery of God and Christ, the mystery of the Godhead. A man that is 100% man and 100% God. Yes. Uh, as I said, Jeremiah. Um, I suppose we could just do a quick search, friends, in the wonderful Bible Gateway which is a free website that I use for these podcasts. Uh, very, very good it is too. You can select from dozens of different translations. You can search any word or phrase, as I'm doing now, if you look at the screen. I've just put in heart of flesh, and there are a dozen results. Um, Ezekiel 3626, which we will, God willing, eventually get to on this channel. We're 
some time away from Ezekiel 36, but we'll get there. I'll give you a new heart. I'll put a new spirit within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Psalm 7326, my flesh and my heart fails. God is the rock of my heart and my portion forever. Psalm 84, 2, my soul longs, yea, even faints for the courts of Yahovah. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. A sound heart is the life of the flesh. And there, there are others. And of course, today's verse there is Ezekiel 119. Ezekiel 4.4.9, thus saith Adonai Yehovah, no stranger uncircumcised in heart, uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary. Of any stranger that is among the children of Yashorel. And then 2 Corinthians 3.3, 3, being manifested to be Christ's epistle ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God, not on stone tables, but on the fleshy tables of the heart. So the point is that one man has authority over all of you, uh, and that one man has power to subjugate all flesh and all nations and all authorities and all dominions to himself. That's the point. The point is everyone's subject to Jesus, whether they like it or not, or whether they know it or not. That's the point. And that's how the whole planet is ruled over. The Father through the Son by the Spirit rules all flesh at this moment and all nations. And so that's how... Uh, mankind will be made to be obedient to God through Christ by the spirit, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says Yahovah Elohim. Now, and that's how mortals are obviously free from delusion and idolatry and wickedry and drunkenness and devilry. So the angels lifted up their wings, the wheels were beside them, the glory of the God of Israel was over them both. The glory of Yahovah, the Kavod HaYahovah, went up from the midst of the city and stood upon the mountain, which is on the east side of the city. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me in the vision by the Ruach HaElohim, the Spirit of God, into Chaldea to those of the captivity. And the vision that I'd seen went up from me. And I spoke unto them of the captivity, all the things that Jehovah had shown me. It's a great thing, friends, to, to study the scriptures. A most remarkable chapter. Most wonderful to... A chapter to see the chapter begins with the spirit lifting Ezekiel up and bringing to the east gate of Jehovah's house. And it is these men counseling wrongly the Jews and their murderous wicked men. And, and God says, that's you finished. I'm going to bring you out of Jerusalem and do away with you as I wish. You will all know that I am the Lord. And as he prophesied, one of them dropped dead there. And then Ezekiel is deeply moved and intercedes. Um, and God reveals to Ezekiel and to mankind that it's demons, doomed, deluded demons that have deluded them and influenced their wickedry. Um, God says, I'm going to scatter them. And of course, uh, that is what happened. Um, and it's referring to the scattering at AD 70 when the Romans caused the Jews, Israelites, to leave Israel. And then God promises to regather them, which has happened uh, 1870 years after that in 1948. Uh, and then God says, I'm going to bring them back to Israel and take away their detestable things and their abominations. I'm going to give them one heart, a new spirit, and take away the stony heart from the flesh and give them a heart of flesh. And of course, that's through their Moshiach, their Melech, their Messiah, their King. Mosiach Melech Yeshua Hamashiach. 
their Messiah King Jesus the Christ. But as for those whose heart walks well pleased with their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their heads, says the Adon, Yahovah. So interesting there, friends, that this theme of men and women that commend wickedly. As I say, friends, I occasionally spend a few minutes watching these Christians on YouTube that go and protest at events, uh, mostly in America, that uh, allow and, uh, uh, well, and commend wickedness. These events that are often uh, sexual perverts are paid, paid large amounts of uh, taxpayers' money to teach children wickedness, to, 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 to show them that it's okay to be a sexual pervert or to pretend to be a woman or a man to prepare uh, themselves to look like a woman or a woman to prepare to make themselves like a man. Um, you know, and uh, the children know that a man dressing as a woman and cavorting around is also very likely to be a sexual pervert that lies with men. Uh, so the whole thing is deeply wicked. And there are Christians that go to protest these events. And they often interview uh, persons of that persuasion outside and get their opinions. They're severely mentally ill, Ill, very much mentally ill with their wicked. Uh, and they commend wickedness, you know, they commend wickedness. And uh, it's an apology about talking about things like this. I know. The controversy, the reality. There was a idiot in Australia amongst in government pride train or government trees, and the wrath of Minister's Titian that allowed kind.
Ah, it's not been on unmute trends for the whole of that. Okay, so the wrath of God is revealed upon the earth against all such wicked friends. Um, God is gracious, God is good to the afflicted, and uh, God is merciful and rich in mercy to those that turn from wickedry. Um, in the Son of God, God has dealt wondrously and graciously uh, and holily. And, uh, you know, God is very, very good to those that call upon him. So Ezekiel then returns to, to the Jews uh, and declares to them everything that the Lord had shown him. Um, those that are well pleased with wickedness, those that commend wickedness, friends, um, are under the wrath of God too. It tells you in Romans 1, the principle of reprobation, persons that commend such wickedry. And we see at the present time wicked governments uh, commanding employees of the government, which is everyone from doctors, nurses, civil servants, so social workers, uh, fire brigade staff, ambulance staff, uh, hospital staff, coast guard staff, uh, road sweepers, teachers, uh, lecturers, and all the office staff in all these organisations of society are commanded, yes, commanded to tell lies. If a man is pretending to be a woman, they must address that man as she and her. If a woman is pretending to be a man, they must address that woman as a he or a him. That's sheer wickedness. And if you don't, you get sacked. Um, and I've just spent five minutes talking without, with, whilst muted. Um, and I was talking about, uh, about the gross wickedness of governments in the allowance and condoning of wickedry. And the things that they teach little children in schools, gross wickedness. You can trace back um, the beginning of the serious problem of sexually transmitted diseases, um, the proliferation of sexual perversion, uh, the proliferation of drink and drugs problems, all happened at a similar time at the beginning of sex education in schools. The sexualization of children has begun. The, a lot of politicians are sexual perverts, that's a fact. And they know that if they were to ask the citizens of any nation whether it's okay uh, to show children as young as six and seven uh, what is pornography, um, and to tell them about anal sex, oral sex, uh, and things like this, then the citizenry would say, no, we don't want you teaching that. Schools are for teaching reading, writing, arithmetic and music and science. That's what schools are for. And perhaps different cultures, things like this. Um, and belief systems, there's nothing wrong with that either. But to teach them anything to do with sex is sheer wickedness, you know. And... Um, as I've said before on YouTube, there are many channels that where Christians go to events where such wicked things are taught. Um, when they're in the community now, taxpayers' money is used to pay sexual perverts, men pretending to be women, to teach little children that it's okay to have what they call an alternative lifestyle, to pretend to be someone of the opposite sex and engage in sexual perversions. And that's what's going on sheer wickedness well the wrath of god is specifically against all men government local councils schools all men and women that teach little children wicked things like that are under wrath because the reality is now teachers uh, men and women that work in, in schools hospitals social service uh, fire police ambulance coast guard services street sweepers uh, and that's a huge chunk of society friends i'm not sure what the statistics are but probably about 
one uh, one in every um, dozen employees in Britain works for the government. Well, you're commanded um, that you you must uh, go along with all this kind of thing. And if a woman pretending to be a man uh, gets in touch, you have to address them as a he and a him. Uh, and if a man pretending to be a woman gets in touch, you have to address her as she or her, which is a lie, which is wickedness. You see, if you don't, you get sacked. Well, a lot of teachers and employees um, that teach such things, they stay in the job for the money when morally they know it's wrong. Well, the wrath of God is against any human being that teaches such things or is involved in the promulgation of such things. Governments that allow sexual perverts to parade around the streets promulgating their perversions are under wrath. Nations that allow such things are under wrath at this moment. So next time, friends, you hear of something terrible happening in a city, know this. It's because of the wrath of Elohim Yahovah against mortals and against governments and against nations. Okay. And it's also against all those humans that go along with such things. If you approve wicked race, say, oh, that's all right. No, no, it's not all right. Yahweh is a great king and rules the whole planet. All things are subject. So be filled with the spirit, walk in love, walk in truth, friends. We'll be back soon with another recording. Shalom, shalom.